All right, so 1-10, we are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers in scientific notation. And for the adding and subtracting part, these are the steps. So if you're at home and you're watching this, please pause the video, write these five steps down in your notes, and then restart the video once you have them written down. Okay, so we are going to use these five steps, and we are going to work an example problem. And notice I have where it says another way. I have that crossed out because I don't care for the way the book has you do it. I think it overcomplicates it. So we're going to do it what I think is an easier way. Okay. Um, now, this is the not using scientific notation. And I don't know about you, but there's not many calculators that can handle that. One, that can handle zeros like that. So you're not going to be able to just put this in a calculator in standard form, okay? So when you have giant numbers like this, you're gonna have to add and subtract, multiply and divide them in scientific notation or write them out and do them by hand, which can get pretty lengthy, okay? So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do it using the five steps that we've talked about. So in your book, you're just gonna have to use this space kind of right here above where it says, try it. And we're gonna actually work it using the five steps. So let's write the problem first of all. Okay, now this wants to know how much difference is there between the earth mass and the moon mass? That's the question. So we're going to use a subtraction problem and we're going to take the earth mass minus the moon mass. Okay, that's kind of what, what we're doing here. And so let's write the problem out to start with. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to write the earth's mass 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Okay, and we're going to put that in parentheses because that's the Earth's mass. And then we're going to subtract it from the moon's mass. And that is 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. So we've got a subtraction problem. We've got it set up. So when we're going through our steps, step one was walk the decimal and the exponent. And then you saw one arrow up and one arrow down. And the reason is that just like in our jump start, and I erased it, but just like in our jump start, we needed matching denominators. So we had to manipulate one to force it. In this case, we need matching exponents. And we have a 10 to the 24 and a 10 to the 22. And so we are going to manipulate one of them to force it to match the other one, just like we did on our fraction, okay? And the way you do that, we've learned so far this week that each time each exponent number accounts for one decimal jump, right? And each decimal jump is going up by a power of 10, right? Or times 10. So if we want to force that exponent to match the 10 to the 22, we need to lower the exponent by two jumps or two spaces, right? Well, if we lower the exponent, then we have to raise the number. So right now it's 5.97. But if we're going to lower the exponent by one move, we need to raise the number by one decimal move to keep them even. Because if we raise the exponent but don't do anything to the number, we've made it a bigger number, right? If we raise both, we've made it a way bigger number. If we just lower the exponent or move the decimal, we've changed the number. And if we lower them both, we've changed it. The only way to keep it fair, kind of like we multiplied the top and the bottom by two, keeping it fair, keeping it equivalent. The only way to do that with exponents and scientific notation is if we're gonna move the decimal, I'm sorry, if we're gonna lower the exponent, so we're gonna do this in two moves the first time. So if we're gonna lower the exponent to 23, we lower the exponent, we need to make the number one jump bigger. You gotta make sure you're doing this with a step-by-step, -step, okay? It's kind of a difficult process. So we went from 5.97 to 59.7. We moved the decimal place once and made our number bigger. We made our exponent one number smaller. Well, our exponent needs to be 22, not 23. So we need to lower it again. And if we lower our exponent, we got to make our number one jump bigger, which means we need to move our decimal one place to make it a bigger number. Number went bigger exponent went smaller. They always have to be inverse actions, okay? Now, step two was rewrite the problem. This is an easy step, okay? You can't skip it, but it's a super easy step. 
rewrite that number without all the jumps and all of the slash marks. So what we did is we took 5.97 and we made it a bigger number and we made it 597. And then we lowered our exponent from 24 to 22. So we moved our decimal place twice. We moved our exponent twice. One went bigger, one went smaller. Now we did not do anything to that second term. It's like in our fraction, we didn't do anything to the second fraction. We don't do anything to the second term. So I'm just gonna rewrite it just as it is. But we've done a little bit of math manipulation and now we have forced our exponents to match and that's what we needed. And so step three, again, super easy step. We just need to rearrange the problem. And kind of like when we were adding our fractions, you add the top, the bottom stays the same. In this case, you add the two numbers and the 10 to the 22 stays the same. Okay, so let's rewrite this and let's write it as, oops, sorry. Let's write it as 597 minus, now where do I get the minus sign? My problem itself is a subtraction problem. If your problem's an addition problem, this would be a plus, okay? But since my problem's subtraction, my little part here is gonna be subtraction. So it's 597 minus 735, okay? And then I keep the times 10 to the 22 as just once. And I can do that now because they match. Okay, this step's very easy in your calculator. Punch in 597 minus 700 or 7.35, sorry. Dayton, what'd you get? Who had it? Who has the number? Go ahead, Olivia. 0.7? Is that right? Okay. Your calculator might be set to round at a, we'll have to change that if your calculator is set to round funny because that'll throw you off. Point what, six, five? Okay, so I subtract it. I keep the times 10 to the tw 22nd because I haven't done anything with that yet, okay? Step five is make sure your final answer is in scientific notation. Is step four currently in scientific notation? That's okay. No, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Is step four in scientific notation? Why not? Right, it's too big a number, right? So I need to make my number smaller, but if I make my number smaller, what do I do to my exponent? Make it larger, right? If I'm gonna make my number smaller to be between one and 10, I need to make my exponent bigger. Now you can do this in one or two steps. It's totally up to you. If you can recognize that you need to make it two bounces smaller, then that means you need to go two higher on your exponent. You can do that in one step if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you, then you can do it in two steps. You can say that you go from here to here, and that takes this up to 23, right? One went smaller, one went bigger. And then I got to keep going because 58 is still too big. So I have to go smaller again, which means I have to go bigger again. You can do that in one or two steps, whatever is easiest for you. Step five right? Make sure we're in scientific notation. We just did a little bit of maneuvering, so let's clean it up. Where is our new decimal point? 5.8965 times 10 to the, and our new exponent after we did the moving one up, one down, is to the 24th. And that is your final answer written in scientific notation. Okay, again, the long process, but each individual step is fairly simple. And that's why I wanted you to write the steps down so that when you're going to do your homework, you can 
just follow the steps one at a time and just do it. And then it's not, it's not a bad thing at all if you can follow the steps. All right, so let's practice this. And I'll just tell you this big story problem ends up being an addition problem, okay? So we're gonna set this up as an addition problem. So we've got this added to this. So let's go ahead and write that out. We've got 2.25 times 10 to the eighth, parentheses around that. And we're gonna add that to 2.5 times 10 to the seventh. Dayton, you got that problem written down? And again, I have the boxes all crossed out because I, we're not gonna do it the way the book shows you. I think they overcomplicate the process. All right, so we've got a 10 to the eight and a 10 to the seven. So we need to manipulate one of them. And it really doesn't matter which one you manipulate. You're gonna get the same answer either way. Okay, so we'll, we'll manipulate the first one. If I need to get my 10 to the eight down to 10 to the seven, I need to lower my exponent, which means I need to do what with my number? Make it bigger or smaller? Make it bigger. So to make it bigger, I move my decimal point to the right one. Okay, that was step one. I walked my decimal, I walked my exponent, one went up, one went down, so I'm good there. Step two is just to rewrite it cleaned up. So now I'm at 22.5 times 10 to the seventh plus 2.5 times 10 to the seventh. All right, great. Now my exponents match, so I'm good. Step three is just to rearrange this. And that means I'm taking this and now notice it's a plus. So I'm taking 22.5 plus 2.5 and I'm writing those together. So 22.5 plus 2.5. And because they're matching, I can just take this whole thing times 10 to the seventh. Okay, now step four is to actually add 22.5 and 2.5 and I get what? What do I get? No, try again. I think your decimal might've been off. 25, good. 25 and then I drop down that times 10 to the seventh because I haven't done anything with it yet. And now last step is to ask yourself, am I in scientific notation? Mm, who haven't I heard from? Jace, can you please take those off and put them under your desk? And am I in scientific notation? Okay, what do I need to do? All right, so I need to make my number smaller, which means I need to do what to my exponent? Bigger. I make my number from 25 to 2.5, so my number went smaller, so my exponent needs to be bigger. And there is my answer in scientific notation. Again, five-step process, exact same time. Every single time you do a plus or a minus, you're going to do these steps. Unless your exponents already match. And if your exponents already match, you can skip step one. You don't have to walk anything if your exponents already match. But if they don't match, you got to start with step one. Okay? Feel okay about that? All right. So now we're going to go to multiplication. So go to the next page, which is page 71. And before we do example two, we're actually going to do example 2.1. Because I want to do a super simple one before we do the example that's in the book. Okay? And there's a reason. So for our super simple one, let's do 3 times 10 to the second times four times 10 to the fifth. Now, how do I know that that's one scientific notation times a second scientific notation? Micah? Because the parentheses are touching. There's not a, a subtraction or a, an addition sign in between them. They're touching, which it means it means multiplication. Now, a couple weeks ago, we did this. We had a... We had a string of multiplication, 
And I said we could rearrange them any way we wanted and group them any way we wanted. Does anybody remember the two properties of multiplication that make that possible? Yep. Commutative is one of them. Uh, anybody remember the other one? Wait, that makes this work? That makes it possible that when you have a big long string of multiplication, you can not only rearrange them, but group them any way you want. Commutative is one, and there was a second one. Good. Associative property. Very nice. So the commutative property and associative property of multiplication says that when you've got groups of multiplication, you can rearrange them and regroup them any way you want. So we are going to rearrange and regroup these, and we're going to put the three and the four together, and then we're going to put the two tens together. So let's start by writing three times four and group that together. And then we're going to take that times the 10 to the second power times 10 to the fifth power. So all I've done here is I've rearranged everything, and that's fair game. What's three times four? Anybody? 12 times. All right, so we've got base, base, keep your base. So what am I gonna, what am I gonna write there? 10. And then when you are multiplying like bases, somebody else, what do I do with those exponents? Somebody I haven't heard from. Maddie, add. So two plus five is seven. Now I need to ask myself, am I in standard notation? Hey, let's see. You guys are awfully quiet in the back. Um, what do I need to do, Corbin, to put this in scientific notation? Yeah, it's currently a 12. Where do I need to move it? All right. So I made that number smaller, right? I made it from 12 to 1.2. So since I made my number smaller, what do I need to do to my exponent? Make it bigger. So that becomes 10 to the 8th. And there's my official answer. Multiplication is really easier. You don't have to go through that step of forcing anything to match. You just simply multiply your numbers and multiply your base 10 to and the exponents. And if you want, okay, and don't skip too many steps, but if you want, you can always skip this step of actually writing it. If in your head, you can look at the three and the four like I did and go three and four is 12 right? And then you can go 10 to the second times 10 to the fifth is 10 to the seventh. So if you want to skip that step of where you write it all out, that's fine with me. If you get confused, back up and don't skip a step, okay? All right, so now let's go to this one, and you'll see why I said this one is a little bit more complicated. It's not terrible, but it's a little more complicated. Multiplying scientific notation, everything has to be in scientific notation, and right now you've got 8.2 times 10 to the second times 43. Is everything there in scientific notation? What's not in scientific notation? Anybody? The 43. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a base 10 in there, but I don't wanna change the value of 43. Can I write 10 to some power, but not change the value? Well, if I do 10 to the first power, I'm taking 43 times 10, which is 430. That changes it. Yeah. If I do 10 to the zero power, what's anything to the zero power? It's one. So I really just took 43 times one, right? Are we good there? Now, am I in scientific notation? Jacob, what do you think? What do I need to do? Yeah, I'm still not quite there. I need to take my 43 and make it 4.3. I made my number bigger, so I need to make my exponent. Nope, sorry. I made my number smaller, so I need to make my exponent bigger. So now this is just the cleaned up version. You've got 8.2 times 10 to the second. That's right here. They just rewrote it. And then they've got this right here. Just clean it up and rewrite it in a nice clean without all the bounces. And I'm not really sure why, but step two, they rewrote that again. You obviously do not have to do that. This just, just simply rewrote what they had up top. Not sure why they did that. And again, right, you can skip this step if it makes sense to you. If you can take 
8.3 times 4.3 or 8.2 times 4.3 and get 35.26. And if you can take 10 to the second times 10 to the third, and remember that it's base, base, keep your base, and then two plus one is three. Okay, you can, but don't skip too much. If you can't get yourself there mentally, write it all out. Okay, split everything up, rearrange everything, and split and and do it a little bit longer. It's kind of like division. You know, you can do short division or long division. If short division makes sense, great. If it doesn't, don't skip steps and go in and fill in the gap. So it's kind of the same thing here. All right. So now that we're here, are we in scientific notation? Dalton, what do you think? I'm at this step right here. Am I in scientific notation here? Okay, what do I need to do? To where? Good. So I took 35 and made it a smaller number, which means what do I have to do to my exponent? Make it bigger. And then your last step is to simply clean it up and write everything in its proper space. So multiplication is typically easier. However, if you're given a whole number like 43, write it times 10 to the zero power and then walk your decimal, walk your exponent, and then go from there. Okay. All right. Are we good with that? Division, even easier, I think. Because we've done this. So if you've got this, which is on top, and you've got divided by this, which is on bottom. We did this last week. Remember when we were how many times greater is something than the other? And I said, put it in a fraction. That's all you're doing here. So what did we do back then? We took just the numbers, put them in your calculator, 1.83 divided by 3, and you got that right there. You can skip all this. This is just the mental behind why you get what you get. Okay, so I took 1.83, divided it by 3, and I got a number. Put that there. Then, kind of separate in your brain separately, you're going to take these. And you've got base, base, keep your base. And 6 minus 1 is 5. Because it's a division problem, I subtract those. Okay, are we good with how I got to this step on both sides? Reduce my numbers, reduce my tens. When it because it's a division problem, it's six minus one is five. If you forget, split it out and put six tens on top, one ten on bottom. I know that's that's the long way behind it. Hopefully you don't need it by now. We've done this enough. I think you can get the shortcut. All right. Am I in scientific notation in that red and purple one? All right. Who haven't I heard from? Who's been quiet? Elijah? What would I do to put this in scientific notation? Good. So I went from 0.6, which was too small. I had to make it bigger. So since I went up in the number, I had to go down in the exponent. Okay. So my number now is 6.1, my exponent is now a four, and I'm good, I'm in scientific notation. Okay? All right, one more thing, uh, let's see. Okay, we're gonna do a try it. Did we do this? No, I don't think we did this in my other classes. I don't think, we're. I think we're good. Um, we can do it really quickly. It will literally take about less than a minute. So we're gonna take this one right here. That's our bigger one, it's a division problem, okay? I'll read the story problem for you and tell you it's division. So you've got 2.6 times 10 to the 18 over 1 times 10 to the 14. Reduce your numbers. What's anything divided by 1? Stays itself. Stays itself, right? So 2.6 times now do your tens by themselves base base keep your base 18 minus 14 is four and am i in scientific notation 
Nice. Don't even have to do a last step. That's why I said it took less than a minute to do. Set it up. Reduce the numbers. Reduce the tens. Make sure you're in scientific notation. All right. On your next page where it says key concepts, this is a little review. This is a for add and subtract. You can mark that out. We did it a different way. Okay. I would refer to your notes on how we did it. I think it's a lot easier. But up here where this purple key is, we're actually going to do an example number four because you do have one like this. Actually, you have two like this on your homework. Okay, so I want to make sure you understand how to do it. So right there at the top of page 72, I want you to write the following problem. Four point six times ten to the eighth equals in parentheses two times ten to the fifth in parentheses and then touching parentheses two point three times ten to the n and we're going to find n. Okay, that's what our instructions are to find n. So basically we have a worked problem, but we've got something missing and we need to fill it in. So if you look at 4.6, that came from two times 2.3, right? Number times number gives us our number. Then we know that it's base times base gives us our base. So everything's a base 10. And I'm just gonna write this down below just to pull it out and show you what we have. We have 10, whoops, not in, sorry. We have 10 to the eighth, equals 10 to the fifth times 10 to the n. And we need to know what that n is. Well, if we have base, base, keep your base, right? That's here. We have base, base, keep your base. How did we get the eight? What do you have to do to exponents when you're multiplying? I see lots of hands, I love it. Maddie, add. So what would we need to add to five to get to eight, everybody? Three. Three, so in this case, n equals three. You have eight on one side. You know you have five on the other. How many more do you need on that side to make it even? You need three more. Now you've got eight on both sides. You're good to go. So you know that n equals three. Okay. Um, for those of you at home, um, make sure you take all these notes in your workbook and then click on the assignment math Excel 1-10 um, to complete your homework.